Hi everyone, welcome back to the fifth in our tutorial series on developing your own Game Boy games in C. Hope you've been enjoying it so far and keeping up. We'd love to see some of the games you've been starting yourselves if you've got that far. But let's crack on with today's tutorial. So today we're going to look at the third graphics layer available in the Game Boy Developer Kit. If you think back to our first tutorial, we went through this kind of diagram here. And we've gone through sprite layers, we've gone through background layers, we're now going to look at the window layer, which is usually used for things like high scores, it's your kind of heads up display. It actually shares some of the kind of storage, the memory with the background layer, so you'll see in a moment you have to work with the two of them together, you can't work with them separately. So we're going to start with the code we created for the last tutorial, the background layer code, but we don't need to have the scrolling, so for now we're just going to comment this scrolling out. So in Visual Studio Code you can do Control C K and it will comment out anything you've got selected. Now a subscriber asked me in Visual Studio how we get rid of this kind of green error here. So it's relatively quick. What it's basically saying is Visual Studio Code can't find this gb.h file and it's trying to use it for what's called IntelliSense. So if we click on this little light bulb and do Edit Include Path, that takes us to this kind of settings file for Visual Studio Code for this project. You'll see here in the includes path, all we need to do is include where the Game Boy Developer Kit's installed. So in my case, that's in the root. And then you add on this include folder and the star star means everything in that folder and any subfolders. So if we just save that. Go back to main, you'll see the squiggles disappeared, but more importantly, you'll see that we can now auto complete. So if we do set, you'll see it finds all the different methods that are in the Game Boy Developer Kit and gives you an idea how to call them. So it's sometimes quite helpful for reference. So what we need today to be able to draw something into our kind of heads up display into that window layer is some fonts. Now we could just go draw our own and bring them in as tiles, um, but actually the Game Boy Developer Kit already has a font library built into it. So we can just go and include that. So if in the includes here at the top, you put this include again to the file in GB font, that's gonna include the font library and then we need to do a few things to actually get started. So we're going to load in a font. So the first thing we need to do is a variable to hold that font. So it's a variable of type font T, and then we're gonna call it min font. That's what we want to call our variable. Now we have to call a method from the font library called font init. You can see it's there in the autocomplete. That will initialize the font library. Now we need to load into our min font variable the font that we want. So there are a number of built-in fonts in the font library. And to load one, you do font underscore load. And then you tell it which font you want. So you can see here, there are quite a few, IBM, IBM fixed, italic. We're going to use the min font, so it's the smallest font set there is. It's got 36 tiles, which is pretty much A to Z and a few other little bits that you might need. So now we're loading in what's built into GBDK called font min into our variable called min font. So they're two different things. And the last thing we need to do to actually get that font working is to set the font. So if you call font set again, another built-in method, we're basically telling it that the font we're currently using is our variable min font. Okay, that will now load up the fonts into the Game Boy's video memory. But you'll see we'll end up with a little problem. So if I load the game in, you can see here that it's loaded in our fonts, which is what we've asked it to do here. And then afterwards, because we've told it to, it's loaded in our background data and that's overwritten the first bit of the fonts. So we're gonna have to find a way to get these not to overwrite each other. And this is where I was saying the background layer and the window layer work together because they share this tile memory. So we need to move one of them to start here instead at the end. So you can't move using the font library, you can't move the fonts. So we're gonna to have to move our background. So rather than occupying these seven slots here, it should start after this Z. The way to do that's quite simple. So we're gonna go and change our background map so that it loads fonts starting at here. So the first thing we need to do is load in those background tiles starting at that new position. So there are 36 tiles in font min, so we're gonna start loading the background data at decimal 37. Still gonna load in seven of them, still gonna load it from background tiles. So if we compile that, you'll see ours are now loading in here, but 
our background map is still referring to tiles that start here so it's starting to use the font as its background so we're going to have to go into the background map and shift all the values in there so that they start here instead so originally this would have been zero and instead this needs to be a new zero so that'll be at tile number 25. That tile number there is in hexadecimal which is what the Game Boy Developer Kit needs not decimal so if we go into simple background map so the first one, we could change this 00 because it's referring really to this font, but as the font itself has an empty slot in the first two, we don't really need to change that because it's still going to be the same. So the first one we need to find is a non-zero value. So if we scroll down, let's do 001 to start with. So 001 should have been referring to this slot here, and it's now going to be referring to this one. So if we look at the tile number, that's 26. So we need to replace 001 with 26. So the way we can do that in here is do edit replace 001 with 26 and replace them all using this button here. Okay, now let's do 003. So that should be 0123, that's now 28 in hexadecimal. Okay, find the next one. There's a 004 there. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 29 in hexadecimal. And then there should be 006 in here. There we go. So 006 is now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is now hexadecimal 2b. So if we save that and build, hopefully we should now get our background loading correctly and still have the fonts in memory. There we go. So all we did there is to shift our background tiles to be loading in a new position and then shift our background map to load from those new positions so we're back to kind of where we were but we now have some fonts we can use so now we're ready to actually start drawing something in our window so if we do set win tiles very similar to how the background tiles works but we don't need to set any win data which we could do if we wanted to to bring our own sprites in because we've already got the fonts loaded so set win tiles and it works very much the same way so we're going to start at zero zero and we want to go width and height here so we're going to go um, five wide and one high that's as much as we need to draw out of it so the last variable it needs here is a map for the window so just like we had a map for the background we've got to tell it which tiles from the tile data we want loaded up in these slots so we don't have one of these yet so we're gonna to have to go and create one so the simplest way to do that is to just go and find the simple background map just copy and paste so control C control V and rename that so we're going to call that window map okay this is the file that was created for us using the Game Boy map designer but we're going to strip out most of this and we're just going to leave five of these I'll go through this in a second And we want to call this not background map because that will clash. So we're going to call it window map. Just tidy up a bit. Okay, so that's window map. We'll come back to it in a moment. We need to include window map just like we do these ones. And then we can refer to window map here. Okay, now that would load something, but all it's going to load, because our window map tells it, is the, the zero tile, so this one, over and over and over again. So we want to find, we actually want to write something out. So what we're going to write is hello. So if we hover over H, that's tile number 13 in hexadecimal. And then E is tile number 10. 
L is 17. And then O is 1A. So H E L L O. Hopefully you can see how I've done that by just looking up which tile index I want, copying the tile number and putting it in there as a hexadecimal number. So that's great, we've now set the wind tiles, but at the moment that's not gonna show us anything because we actually need to show the window. So like we did show background, we're gonna do show win. Okay, now that'll actually display something. So if I compile that. Great, so we've got our hello, but you may have noticed it's completely wiped out the background. And this is a tricky thing about window. Window is not transparent and it sits on top of everything else. So behind that is our background and our sprites would be there and we can't see them at all. So what we need to do is to move the window so that it's down at the bottom here and then we can see all the other stuff underneath. So we can do that relatively quickly. If we go back to our code, we just call move win then you just give it an X and a Y coordinate that you want to move it to. So I'm going to move it across a little bit and down 120 pixels. So if we recompile again. Okay, there you've got your background and you've got your screen. If we just uncomment the scrolling again so we can see something there. Control K U will uncomment the scrolling. There we can scroll the background, but keep our screen at the bottom with our scores or whatever it happens to be. You'll also see I've missed out one in the background map here, so that I've actually got zero there. So somewhere in our background map, we've still got a wrong number, which I couldn't see until we'd got there. So there must be a small number in here somewhere. So we missed out zero, zero, two. So that now needs to move to zero, one, two. So that'll be 27. And if we rebuild, that fixes our problem. So that's the basics of how to do your window layer and then what you can put in there. You could put text in. If you're doing a text adventure, you can put your own icons in. You can put all kinds of things in. But you'll notice there's a bit of a limitation here in that it can only be at the bottom. I can't shift it up. So I can't have a heads up display very easily that appears right at the top here um, by just moving it down as we were doing. To be able to do that, I'd have to show you a lot more complicated code and some of it, to be honest, right now, I don't exactly understand how it works. So if you're interested in finding out how to do that, please let me know and we'll put a future video up showing you exactly what the code for that looks like and how it works. But for now, it's probably too much of an advanced level to try and go into in this first kind of tutorial series. So that's all for now. Hopefully you can now understand how to get your basic Game Boy graphics up and running and maybe you can even start your own game. Please don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode. That's all for now, bye.